Our divisional trade preview series continues with a look at the AL East. We'll tell you which major leaguers on the Yankees, Red Sox, Rays, Blue Jays, and Orioles can be realistic trade targets for the Mariners coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Wednesday, October 30th, 2024. This is Tony Gonzalez and Colby Patton out for the Locked On Mariners podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today we'll be looking at all five teams in the AL East for potential trade targets for the Mariners. But before we do that, shout out to our title sponsor today, Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On MLB. That's L O C K D O N M L B for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And if you want to hear from me and Colby even more and help support the show, check out our Patreon. Sign up now to hear us create our twenty twenty five Mariners off season plan, which I believe will be wrapping up today on CTZ. So be sure to check that out. So as we did last week when we went through all of the uh, National League divisions, uh, we're going to work in reverse order of the standings in the AL East today, which uh, allows us to kick things off with the Toronto Blue Jays team up in my neck of the woods here, who uh, pretty disappointing, had a pretty disappointing year this year. Uh, and this team now looks like it is firmly in a rebuild heading towards a rebuild. You look at this roster it is not particularly good. Uh, they have Vlad Jr., who obviously the Mariners were apparently very aggressive on at the deadline, even after Rosa Reina. Uh, they didn't get him. No one did, of course. And with Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins uh, still in charge, still running the show in Toronto, uh, Vlad entering the last year of his deal, I'm not sure they're going to trade him and essentially wave the white flag on the uh, the era of Blue Jays baseball that those two guys helped cultivate, right? I think they're going to try and extend him and make him the face of the franchise for a very long time. Uh, but I do believe that the uh, the Mariners will try and circle back on that idea. They will call and see if things have changed over the last few months. Uh, and I think they will be aggressive again in their offer. I just don't think that it's going to happen. But Vlad obviously does make sense. Obviously, position of need for the Mariners. He's young. He kind of fits the bill of who they would actually pay big money to if they brought him in. Obviously, because he's going to make a lot in arbitration just for this year. But also, an extension which doesn't factor into the trade costs, doesn't factor into the trade discussion. But he is someone, in theory that the Mariners would actually potentially like to extend and give long-term big money to uh, because of the age. And obviously he's a star, but he's a star that's not going to, he's probably not going to be one of those stars that makes like $40 million a year either. Right. So, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's probably uh, a dead end there on the Guerrero front. The other big name here who could be, a more realistic option is Boba Shutt, who's coming off of a really bad year. Uh, not just for his standards. He was just awful this year. Uh, and also injury plagued season as well for, for Bo. Uh, but he's got one year left and Colby, he is making, or he's projected to make almost exactly the amount of money that Mitch Haniger is set to make. And we've talked about that idea more so on our Patreon show than on here. What do you think about the Bichette idea in general and then potentially sending Mitch Haniger up to Toronto, which would increase the prospect return, which could be appealing to the Blue Jays, but also essentially allow the Mariners to address one of their needs for free money-wise? Bo Bichette is, is an interesting idea that comes with his own red flags. Um he hasn't been healthy. He wasn't healthy this year. Uh, he wasn't productive this year either. Double whammy there. Uh, in addition, there are some uh, probably more than murmurs at this point, but there were some clubhouse issues. He's not happy with, you know, being in Toronto and obviously, you know, his 
manager wasn't too thrilled with him this year. And like, like there's some concerns there. And so if it can happen in Toronto, couldn't it happen in Seattle? Is this an isolated incident where the guy just needs a clean slate and just kind of a, you know, a, a change of scenery uh, to fix that problem? Or is this a guy who's just going to be a malcontent uh, wherever he goes and you stack that on? That's, that's probably uh, the least concerning of the concerns you have with Bichette. Uh, mm. The injury, but it, but that might kill it right there for the Mariners because this is obviously a team that has moved on from guys that have been mm-hmm. that have presented issues within the clubhouse, right? So if they think that Typically he not. has, right, right. But if, if if they you know if they think that he brings his own set of red flags within the clubhouse and within the clubhouse setting, that might just kill that for them. It might, but I think they'd be willing to take the shot on it because it's only for one year. Um, and, and so, you know, they don't even have to pull a trigger. If it doesn't work, right, they just let them go into free agency. Um, so there's not even like, I mean, you don't have to trade something of value to get them off your roster or anything like that or, or dump them for less than you think he probably should be worth, like Jesse Winker. Um, you know, you don't have to do that. So. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. The injuries, though, and the lack of production this last year is the, are the bigger red flags to me, at least. Um, so, yeah, mm-hmm. Bichette, interesting guy. He's still in his 20s. He's still in his prime. Like, it's a one-year rental, so prospect cost shouldn't be astronomical. And I don't think that if you're taking on – I think if you're taking on Bichette, $16 million, like all of it, the prospect capital that you're going to give up – well, it's still probably going to be guys that we recognize, like names that we've talked about before. It's certainly not going to be like, you know, I mean, obviously Colt Emerson or Laz or, or maybe Michael Arroyo, if you're yeah. taking all the money at most. But like if you're if the Blue Jays want like the most return they can get, if they just want the best package they could get for Boba Shett, they want a package similar to what they probably could have gotten last winter when they apparently did think about trading him as well. Uh, if they want to package similar to that, then they should eat most of, if not all of that money uh, to basically present zero risk to the team that's acquiring him. Uh, and they can do that for the Mariners by simply taking on Mitch Hanager's contract. And then that would basically wipe the slate clean. And, and then all of a sudden, right. like, hey, would you trade Cole Young for one year of Boba Shett if it's not going to add anything to your to your salary, uh, to your payroll? You might. You, you might consider that uh, again, you're, you're banking on Bichette being better than he was last year. He has to be, but yeah, you don't have to look back too far to see this guy as a legit all-star. Yeah, he's a middle. perennial. I mean, he was, he's offensively, he's up the middle, Randy or Rosarena. Right. And I mean, for you, he'd probably play second or third, uh, but those are still very valuable positions. He's mm. a fine shortstop. So he should be able to play those two spots just fine. Uh, he's going to hit 20 home runs doesn't really steal very many bags anymore. He doesn't walk a ton, but he's going to hit for a pretty high average. He's going to slug, you know, above league average clip. He's going to, you know, having a league average above league average on base, mostly because he's going to hit, you know, 280. Uh, he gets a ton of hits. You know, he's a valuable player. He really is. And he's only 27, I believe. But again, there are a lot of red flags here. You only get him for one year. Mm-hmm. And his value on the trade market is a little tough to pin down as a result. So it just muddies well, all the water. <laughs> He's going to get a boost in value naturally from the fact that there just aren't that many options out there like we've talked about. Mm-hmm. But still, this is a guy that you know is not going to re-sign in Toronto. Nope. And at this point, again, given where the, the Blue Jays are right now, I think they're in a rebuild at this point. They have other up-the-middle options that they probably prefer to play at this point. Again, because Bichette is not coming back in 2026. So it just feels like you're kind of wasting reps playing him this year or keeping him and playing him this year. I mean, yes, could you hold on and hope that he goes nuclear and you get more at the trade deadline for him and at that point he's cheaper and yada, 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 yada. Maybe. Maybe. But what if he doesn't? Exactly. What if he's okay, like he's just fine, uh, and now all of a sudden the team that's acquiring him gets him for two months instead of a full year? Yeah, so teams know this. The 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 Blue Jays don't have a lot of leverage here in a Bichette deal. So again, because there aren't that many options, because Bichette does have a long track record of success, is still young. You can still point to injuries and be like, well, this is just an outlier year. Yeah. There 
it's going to cost you something, even if you take on all the money. But it's not going to be much. It really isn't going to be much. I just can't imagine no. that. And like again, it's a it's a rental deal, so there's not a shot. I mean, there there's a shot that he does sign an extension here, right? Luis Castillo did. Now he was a year and a half away from free agency uh, mm-hmm. instead of a year, but yeah, like it's not out of the realm of possibility. Bichette comes here, he hits, he loves it, he signs an extension. Bada boom, bada bing. We have you know a, at least the third baseman of the future, maybe the shortstop of the future. Blah blah blah. He's younger than JP. Yada yada yada. It's also possible he comes, he's fine, he's productive, and and he, he's a free agent at the end of the year and he leaves. So you have to be careful what you're giving up to acquire him, uh, particularly with the money, if that is going to be a factor. If not, you could be a little bit more aggressive on it. But again, if, if we're being generous and we're assuming that the Mariners have like $30 million to spend this winter, which is generous, Bichette takes up half of it, and he yeah. may or may not help you this upcoming yeah. year. And that's on top of the prospect capital you have to give up to get the guy. It's not a slam dunk, but I do think it's something that Jerry and Justin will actually look at and, and probably uh progress If the Mariners acquired him, they're they're gonna have to erase some of the money. I think so, yeah. But yeah. I, I do think this is something that Jerry and Justin would look at. I, I think this is the type of player that they would be very interested in talking about this winter. Uh real quick before we move on to the next team and the next segment, uh anyone else that stands out to you from this roster? If it's a true, true rebuild, which I don't think it is, because if it was, you'd bring in a new GM, I would think, to run it. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, if it was like Dalton Barshow, vaguely interesting, but you're pretty set in the outfield. Uh, and he's so, coming off of what? Shoulder surgery, I believe. Yeah. I mean, he's not much of a hitter anyways. It's mostly glove and about an average bat. Uh, but, you know, you do have a DH spot. You can move a Rosarena to and you'd have a great defensive outfield with Varshow, Julio and, and Robles out there. Uh, you know, the guy like, uh, Eric Swanson, who's probably going to get non-tendered anyway, so yeah, don't really have to trade for him, but, uh, there are a couple of guys in that bullpen. Uh, Ramon, Romano doesn't really make a ton of sense right now. He's coming off his own injury, making too much money. Yeah. So like, I mean, I don't know. You want to take a shot on trying to fix you know, Manoa. You want to, you want to take that shot? Uh, that'd be kind of funny if they did it. Uh, but no, there's not a ton here. I think it's Vlad who I think is going to be too expensive. Uh, for the Mariners to acquire uh, trade cost wise. It's going to be Bichette, who I think is interesting, but has its own red flags. Maybe Varsho, uh, but, and then maybe one or two of the bullpen arms, but it's really the two, the two big guns here are, are the guys you're going after. And and I do think the Mariners will talk to Toronto about both of them uh, mm-hmm. with, and I think those talks will get pretty far down the road, whether or not they lead to anything. I don't know, but I think it's going to be more than just like, Hey, is this guy available? No. Okay. Like I think names will be exchanged. Packed no, I think the, I think the mayors will continue to press them yeah, like they I did do. with Vlad. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and then we'll see with Bo again. I, you know, I'm not sure if like the, the potential personality slash clubhouse issues that may or may not exist. Mm-hmm. Maybe that just kills it right away or yeah. it's the, you know, the performance risk that kills it for them. The money that kills it for them. Maybe it's a shot they want to take though. And keep in mind the Mariners yeah. and the blue Jays made two trades just Three months ago, yeah, they know who each other likes. Oh, they were talking well at this point. They yeah. were talking. They were so talking. So don't be yeah. shocked if they make another one at some point this winter. Yeah. All right. So we are going to get into another team. The Mariners talked quite a bit with uh, a few months ago, and have talked quite a bit with over the course of Jerry Depoto's tenure in Seattle. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays and more in just a moment. But first, a reminder: this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Price Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Price Picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn $10 into $1,000. Cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this football season when you and your crew run your game on Price Picks. Download the Price Picks app today and use the promo code Locked On MLB to get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's promo code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks, run your game. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. We are coming through the AL East for Mariners trade targets, potential trade targets. 
Uh, we just talked a lot about the Toronto Blue Jays because obviously they have quite a bit of star power, big names there to talk about with uh, Vlad and Bo Bichette. Uh, now let's turn to another team that the Mariners have talked with a lot. That's the Tampa Bay Rays. Obviously made the trade for Randy Arozarena uh, near the trade deadline. Uh, they were also rumored to be heavily involved in the Yandy Diaz talks. So let's just start there with Yandy Diaz because he didn't get traded. Uh, you think they circle back on Yandy? Yeah, uh, to a certain extent. Um, they do have an opening at DH slash first base. I, I do think Ray Lee is going to factor in pretty heavily there. Uh, but yeah, Diaz is is certainly an interesting guy. Hits a lot of ground balls, uh, You know, doesn't hit a ton of home runs. Uh, so your first base profile, maybe 20 home runs. Uh, if you're lucky, he shouldn't play anywhere but first base or DH. I know he's got some experience at third, some at second. He's not good there. Uh, so... Uh, it should just be a first base DH, but he's going to hit for a high average. He's going to hit a lot of doubles. Um, he's, you know, puts the ball in play quite a bit. Uh, he's a good hitter still, even though he's 32, 33 years old. It's just his his ceiling is capped a little bit because he hits so many ground balls. Um, so that's just who he is as a hitter, too. There's no point in trying to change him. Uh, so, yeah, I do think they'll circle back a little bit here. But, you know, our understanding was is that at the at the deadline they wanted more for diaz and they wanted for a rosarena which is weird to me at least but uh so i i think the price we'll see obviously there'll be more buyers this winter well you would think there would be more buyers this winter than there would be at the trade deadline but i i believe i remember there it coming down to four teams and houston seattle the mets i believe were one of them uh i think it was the astros pirates yankees that's right, Mariners. pirates, pirates yeah. yes um, so yeah, kind of a, a weird combination there. Pirates in there for some reason. Um, but yeah, hey, they it, got, it, they, they went out and they got, uh, IKF. They got mm-hmm. Ryan De La Cruz. Those worked uh, out great. Didn't they? Yeah. Um, but they, they went out and they, you know, they were they trying tried. to acquire, they were kind trying of. to acquire major leaguers. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I do think they'll circle back a little bit. The contract's not that big of a deal. Uh, so yeah, I, I could see, uh, Diaz. I don't think there's, going to be much concern about uh the Rosarena Diaz beef uh that seems to get overblown every time we talk yeah. about this guy. Yeah. Uh but I do think they'll circle back to some degree. I just don't know if that's the the big name that they're going to go after. I, I use big name loosely, but I don't think that's like the big prize they're going to go after this the, the name you guys are going to recognize, right? Yeah. Um Brandon Lyle is mm-hmm. the guy that I think fits the most here. Yeah. Uh cuz so he's got a club option this year and next uh, for ten ten and a half million dollars this year. Obviously, the the Rays are stingy with money, to put it lightly, but I do think that they are going to pick up that option because they know they they can trade him, right? Because um, that's a very reasonable deal for uh, a player like Lau, even with his injury history and concerns. Because uh, the dude rakes when he is mm-hmm. healthy, when he is on the field, he especially provides a profile that's unique to second base right he actually hits for quite a bit of power now is it 39 home run power like we saw in 2021 probably not but is it 20 to 25 yeah Mm -hmm. which is still well above average for the second base position uh this year 244 311 473 it's a 123 wrc plus he was worth 2.2 f4 and 107 games I think if there's anyone on this Rays roster that in glowing, flashing, neon signs screams Mariner, it's Brandon Lau. I think if, like, to put it another way, I think if, like, I told you that the Mariners were acquiring one veteran from the Rays this winter, you would put, you would put most of your money on it being Brandon Lau. Like, he just makes a ton of sense. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, you know, Diaz and Lau, there's actually quite a few guys on the Rays team that uh, could make sense. Now, a lot of them are like part-timers or they're like, you know, they're kind of lottery ticket type of guys, but uh, there are a lot of guys on this roster that do make sense. What about Christopher Morel? Like, Would they already They might. On? He was terrible. And we know that he's not great defensively. Um, I, I, For the life of me, I don't know why they traded Paredes for the guy, but they might. Uh, so think about him a little bit, but there's also those guys, you know, the Rays always have those like 
23, 24, 25 year olds who are on the 40 man who have the cup of coffee at the big leagues and they kind of hit, but not really your Taylor walls, your Curtis Meads, your uh, Jonathan Aranda uh, yeah. types. Like they always have guys like that uh, floating around. Palacios is another one. Yeah. Uh, I think Jose Siri would be kind of interesting. He strikes out a ton. A so ton. much, so much. Might be the best center fielder in baseball defensively plus power. So you have mm-hmm. to use him very specifically. You don't want him as an everyday guy, but as a fourth outfielder can play all three outfield spots at elite levels, has power, uh, particularly against lefties. He's kind of interesting. I could see them go after Josh Lowe. Like if the Rays are shopping Josh Lowe, that's a, yeah. a high upside uh, shot that the Mariners could take here. Uh, I, I think that, uh, Curtis Mead, uh, is, is kind of a, if the Mariners can't get a third base solution, like a proven third base solution, they might go for a guy like Mead Who's got a really strong bat has hit everywhere, has a little bit of success in the big leagues. Uh, you know, he's no Austin Shenton, but pretty close. Uh, and Oh, Hey, the Mariners could go get Austin Shenton too. That would be a, yeah, a guy course, that they could go get. Of course. Yeah. So the Rays actually have quite a few guys that are pretty interesting. Did you um, mention Pete Fairbanks? I did not. I, I was just talking about the bats. So yeah, yeah. there are a couple of uh, arms as well uh, that make uh, some sense. Uh, Fairbanks being one, Clevenger being another. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it'd be awesome if you can get McClanahan, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't think the Rays are going to do that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Aranda, like me, Palacios, those guys who are, you know, they they played in the majors. They've had some level of success, but most of their success has been at the high minors. Like I could see the Mariners making a swap for like, for example, um, just, I don't even know if this makes sense for both clubs, but just as one example, I could see them doing something like Harry Ford for Curtis Mead. Right. It, it, it's kind yeah. of the, the way back when the Sam Tui Valala for, um, it's much higher it? level than that, but it, it was, it, uh, it is, Seth Elledge. Yes. Where you basically trade a guy like you figure two guys are no, uh, no, yeah, yeah. Harry Ford and Curtis Mead are a lot more significant than Seth Ellis sure. and Sam Tui Valala. Sure, but it's the same idea, right? You trade a guy sure, who's yeah. more prepared to help you this year, and you trade a guy whose ceiling is probably about the same as the guy you're giving up. It's just you get yeah, the yeah. ceiling now versus two years right. in the future. So, right, right. Uh, yeah, the the Rays are a really fun team to look at. Uh, so the Red Sox, this is a team that, hey, if you're trading one of your starting pitchers is mm-hmm. pretty interesting. But if you're not, then not really that interesting. I mean, Rob Ref Snyder is basically their Did their Dylan Moore more or less. He had a really good year, but yeah, eh. only against lefties. Yeah. Uh, do you want to kick the tires on Masataka Yoshida? Not at $50 million. He's still owed over the next three years. Yeah. For so, a DH only. I mean, I like I like the bat. Yeah, I, I don't like the contract. If you're trading one of the starters, obviously Jaron Duran is someone that we've talked about, uh, and that would be probably if you're trading, you know, Gilbert or, or Kirby, it would be right. for Duran. Um, Tristan Casas is someone that uh, we've heard a lot of people in the Mariners fear talk about. I know Adam Jude has uh, written about him. Um, I just I'm, I'm not sure if that particularly sure works. That. Yeah. Nope. Uh, William Abreu as a yeah. guy, Rafael is a guy, uh, Roman Anthony down in the minors is a guy. Uh, so yeah, if, if you're trading, like, like if you're looking for teams that could possibly put together a package intriguing enough that the Mariners would be willing to trade a Kirby or a Gilbert type, the Red Sox are one of the few teams because they have position players that you know are in the big leagues they're young and, and they're performing a little bit right now so the red sox are one of the few teams that could theoretically put it together again i don't think they're actually going to line up on a trade cost because i think if if they're going how about casas you know or whatever then the mayors are like okay how about him and roman anthony uh and rafael like I, I just don't see that happening but again if you're going to trade one of your four pitchers not luis castillo uh you know one of your young controllable pitchers uh, the Red Sox are one of the few teams that I think could put up a competitive offer. I don't think that's going to happen though. And so what you're stuck with is like the Rob Raff Snyders who do have, do have value. I mean, they're not nothing. They're not unvaluable. It's just, yeah, you know, whatever. That's what you're looking at. You want to get, if the Red Sox want to eat most of the money, if not all of the money, Trevor's story is kind of a, a name. We know, we know the Mariners had interest in the past. 
They did. And he did not want to come here, and looks like they dodged a bullet there. Uh, but uh, he is a guy. But will who, they do the uh, the Jack Sorensic, uh Kendris Morales thing? Like, no, you will come you to will Seattle. Be. I mean, they <laughs> kind of already did that with Troy Taylor. Like one way or another, you're going to be a Mariner. So, um, yeah, Trevor Story, uh, what's left on his contract? Because like maybe it's like, hey, you take Hanniger this year. And I think it's like four he, years left or three years left. I think he's got an opt out. It makes it really like Trevor Story's yeah. not going to be a Mariner this winter. But no. you know, again, if, if they want to eat like most of it and blah 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 blah, just a yeah. name to keep in the back of your mind. I would say sure. he's got sure. an opt out after next year. Probably not going to take it. Although if he hates Seattle that much, he might. So. Uh, yeah, but there's not a ton here unless you're going to trade one of your one of your starters. Yeah. All right, so we have the Orioles and Yankees left. We'll go over those uh, two rosters in just a moment. But first, a reminder: this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is once again brought to you by Game Time. So I used to live in New Mexico, and down in New Mexico, there are zero pro sports teams, and a lot of bands and artists that I listen to skip going there more often than not. So when I moved to Toronto, where there's a baseball team, a basketball team, a hockey team, even a soccer team, and there's great music being played every night in the city, I was right in my element. When I want to catch a ball game or my wife and I want to see a band, I always get my tickets through Game Time. And that was the case well before Game Time sponsored our network and before I even joined the network, because it is truly the best ticketing service out there, hands down. I truly, truly believe that. And now it's getting even better thanks to Game Time Picks. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I can just go on the app, it'll show me the best deal right away, it'll show me the exact view I'll have, and most importantly, it'll tell me exactly what I'm going to pay with Game Time's all in pricing so there are no annoying little fees that pop up at the last second. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On MLB. That's L O C K D O N M L B for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem promo code L O C K D O N M L B for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. We are coming through the AL East for potential Mariners trade targets on the major league rosters. Of course, we are strictly just looking for major leaguers who could help the Mariners in 2025 on all of these rosters. Uh, before we get into the Orioles and the Yankees, those are the two teams that we have left. Uh, you have the numbers on Trevor's story, correct? Yeah, it's kind of a weird contract. He's due 22 five this year. So if it's like Hanniger for story, then story's a $5 million gamble at third base or second base for you this year. Then he has a, an opt out with a $5 million buyout. If he doesn't take that, you would owe him two years at 50 million. So hypothetically, it's like Mitch Hanniger and let's say, uh, let's say it's Mitch Hanniger. Uh, the Mariners acquire Mitch, uh, the Mariners trade Mitch Hanniger. They acquire Trevor story and let's say $25 million. At that point, story essentially becomes three years if he doesn't opt out. And if he opts out, the Red Sox should be on the hook for that. It would be three years at about $30 million. Mm. Is that a gamble you're willing to take on Trevor Story? Because there's a pretty decent chance you just flush $30 million down the toilet. But what if you don't? What if he's pretty good? Uh, so, yeah, again, something to keep in mind. I'm not saying it's likely. I'm just saying yeah. it's out there. Like, just... Do with that information what you want. Yeah. So the Baltimore Orioles, um, this is another team that's pretty interesting if you're trading one of your pitchers. But if you're not, then we're probably talking about Ramon Arias, which we could go from Luis Arias to his brother, Ramon. And then I could easily transfer memes to, you know, common Ramon Arias W. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also Cedric Mullins, who you really like, uh, but is mm-hmm. projected to make a bit of money. Um, I know you want to talk about him though. Uh, but first, like if you are trading one of the starting pitchers who on this roster, would you like the most? Got Not Adley Rutschman. Cause he's, he's diet Cal Raleigh. Uh, Adley Rutschman is food savers. Cal Raleigh. He is great value. Cal Raleigh. Uh, hey. he's what, He's like the fake uh, old Navy jersey that you get when you really wanted the the fresh, you know, 
Geno Smith throwback. Like, no, he he's he sucks. Like compared to Cal Raleigh, like no, no. He was really bad for most of this year though. Really? Like you guys if you're if you're not familiar with what Adley Rushman did this year, and I think it's from May onward, pretty he, much he sucked. He was really bad. Like I was very surprised when I looked at those numbers. Yeah, I mean he's at best, the second best switch hitting catcher in the American League. At best, uh, and that's only because I can't think of any other switch hitting catchers, to be honest. Uh, besides, you know, the big one. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, if anybody for the young pitcher, I'll take Gunnar Henderson. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, aside from him, um, you know, at that point, it becomes more about what pieces I can get because I'm not trading one of my pitchers straight up for Kobe Mayo. Like I, I'm not right. doing it for Hessen Kierstad. I'm I'm not. Would you uh, trade Miller or Wu for Westberg? No, nope, I wouldn't. Mm. Not straight up. Uh, so yeah, no, I like Westberg fine. Um, mm. they want to do Westberg and Kierstad, then we can have a conversation. But uh, mm. no, I, I wouldn't. Uh, pitching is is too valuable. Uh, and the Mariners again, they do not have the replacements in house right now whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, and those two guys are making the minimum. So they'd have to go and spend more money to go and fix a problem that is already fine. Like it's not a problem right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, I wouldn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, Westbrook's super interesting. Uh, wouldn't hate it. I just wouldn't do it. Uh, but yeah, I think Westberg, Kierstad, Mayo, I think two of those guys have to be involved for me to be interested in moving one of my arms uh, to, the, to the Orioles. Uh, so outside of the uh, potential pitcher trade targets. Um, Bryant Mountcastle is another guy that was rumored in trade talks around the deadline, kind of surprisingly. Uh, so well, maybe they traded Austin Hayes instead. So, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see if maybe he's still available, if they're still open to trading him. Obviously again, the Mariners have, um, you know, at bats to give at DH and first base. So that could be an mm-hmm. option. Uh, but yeah, I know that you're really zeroed in on uh, Cedric Mullins here on this roster. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you only get him for a year. He's going to be making a good chunk of money, and he really is a platoon bat. Uh, now, he is the strong side platoon, he, which means he crushes righties. Uh, I mean, I don't know, crushes, but he's very good against righties. Two, uh, 245, 325, 441 this year. 17 of his 18 home runs were against righties. Uh, he also... Uh, is a pretty solid defender. You're not going to ask him to play center field much, but he can absolutely do it. Uh, so you get a plus defensive corner outfielder. You get a guy who's got 20 home run pop as a part-time player. You know, if you give him, if you could hit lefties at all and he's a full-time player, A, he's probably not available. Uh, but B, he's also probably hit 30 home runs. Uh, but he does steal 30 bags. And we know that the Mariners, we look at what they did in the second half. This is a team that looks like they want to run a little bit more uh, than they have in the past. And Mullins is certainly that type of dude who can steal bags, run around the outfield, make really good plays. And we saw him, I think we've seen him a couple times now against the Mariners, just take over a game and be the best player on the field, uh, which is pretty impressive when you consider the talent that is typically on the field in a Mariners versus Orioles series. Uh, So really like him. He's 30 years old. You only get him for a year. He's going to cost you almost 10 million bucks. He's going to cost you something pretty nice prospect wise. Like he might cost you a Logan Evans type of guy, uh, maybe a Michael Morales type. Uh, but he is a great fit for what Seattle needs. Mostly I would play him in left field and I would have a Rosarena DH most of the time. Uh, But again, Mullins could play center. So you could have Julio DH on certain days. He could play right. You have Robles, blah, 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 blah. Like he fits really well. It's, it's, it is entirely possible. In in fact, likely that against right-handed pitching, Rayleigh, Robles, Julio, Rosarena and Mullins all fit in the lineup. And honestly, they might fit one through five in some order. That's mm-hmm. the type of hitters they are. So, uh, yeah, I really like Cedric Mullins. I, I am pretty invested in that idea. Uh, anyone in the bullpen? Uh, they have quite a few names. Um, Jacob Webb. Yeah, Jacob Webb, who well, the I've Mariners only, yeah. really I've got only to seen him. pitch against the Mariners, and I still like him. So that should tell you yeah. something. Yeah, the Mariners were able to get to him. Doesn't seem like anyone else was, though, this year. Yeah, go figure. Jacob Webb. The Mariners... The Mariners are Jacob Webb's kryptonite. Yeah. Like legit good reliever, Jacob Webb. And they're just like, eh, yeah. no matter. Uh, Cano had a step back of a year, but he was still pretty good. 
Yeah. Uh, Keegan Aiken, if you're looking to add another lefty to the bullpen. Yeah, I think it's mostly Webb for me. I just think Cano is going to be a little too expensive for my taste uh, in the bullpen. Um, obviously, Kimbrell's not even on the roster anymore. He got DFA'd late in the year. Yeah, uh, yeah Aiken would be fine too. Uh, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. But yeah, I think it's it's you know mostly the young pitchers, and then I'm looking at Cedric Mullins is, is kind of who I would. Uh, if you're not trading the young pitcher, to me, this is kind of a, a one player team. Uh, unless there's a surprise out there, like, hey, mm-hmm. if you can get Ke- Heston Kierstad for, you know, Harry Ford or or Johnny Farm or whatever, right? Some kind of prospect for young big leaguer swap. Fine, great, whatever. But uh, I think it's Mullins uh, for me, unless you're trading one of the uh, one of the four pitchers. And then lastly, the team that's fighting for its life right now, the New York Yankees. Uh, the players that stand out to me the most on this roster are all about to hit free agency. Yep. That's Glaber Torres. Right. Of course, Juan Soto, but, uh, Glaber Torres, Mm -hmm. um, Anthony Rizzo, maybe if you're looking for that veteran first baseman, who's not Carlos Santana or Justin Turner or do a little bit clay Holmes. Yeah. I'm sure they'd love to trade DJ LeMahieu, but jokes on you, suckers! Like you're stuck there, just like Would you they trade can. Jazz. I don't think so. I think they'd yeah. love the Jazz um, yeah. next year. So, yeah, I just honestly I look at the Yankees major league roster and I go, not a ton here. Like, I mean, I guess maybe they could try and sell high on Luke Weaver, but again, that's a, a team competing for the World Series. Are they going to trade one of their best bullpen arms to you for minor leaguers? Probably not. So. Uh, yeah, I just look at the Yankees overall and I say, you know, there's just not a great fit here. Um, you know, even like even if, for example, the Mar- or the the Yankees are like, we really want George Kirby. Like you look at this team, you're like, are you trading Kirby for Anthony Volpe? No, probably not. It's not a great farm system either. So like even if they wanted one of your pitchers, I don't really see a, a deal going forward so yeah the yankees and the mayors they just don't line up that well on, on a major league deal uh so yeah i think it's maybe jazz if they if they shop him probably not going to though maybe luke weaver if they shop him probably not going to uh by the way luke weaver having success makes me happy big luke weaver guy here it it is really weird to see a reliever leave the mariners and get better though uh he found the change up yeah so he's yeah. been amazing Mm-hmm. Luke Weaver, awesome dude too. Funny, funny dude. All right, so um, yeah, I think that's about it on the Yankees roster. Just nothing really too interesting there no. with regards Most, to trades. They're all free agents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free agent wise, yeah. There, there's some labor definitely. There's some yeah. stuff here, but yeah. All right, so uh, tomorrow we'll be doing the AL Central. Uh, Friday we'll be doing the AL West. So another week, no fan fiction Friday, but it should be back next week. Uh, next week though is going to be off season plan stuff as well. Of course that is going to do it for us before we get out of here. A reminder that locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon fire TV and the free fire TV channels app locked on sports today is here for you. 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league by locked on sports today now available on the free fire TV channels app. Thank you so much for joining us here on the locked on Mariners podcast for Colby Pat note. I'm Tidy Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore mirrors. You can follow me at Tide Gonzalez and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.